All right, y'all. So I'm looking raggedy right now. Obviously, I'm getting ready. But today we are going to be attacking my anxiety and agoraphobia head on. And I'm nervous about it, but I feel like it's very much necessary. And it was the perfect opportunity for me to do this. So this morning I am getting ready to go to record my podcast. Just like anything else, I feel like <clears throat> it has become associated with my anxiety. I mean, pretty much everything eventually becomes associated with my anxiety. And for me, with agoraphobia is when I feel like I'm in a situation where I cannot readily just leave, like i.e recording a podcast i can't just be like oh you know what i ain't feeling this i'm finna do it moving with any situation like that there is the potential for a panic attack for me and a lot of it is mental because obviously like i just said if i believe i'm in a situation where okay i could possibly have a panic attack and i can't just get up and dip if i want to when i start to get that in my head then it the the likelihood of me having a panic attack goes up exponentially obviously so it's mental um can it happen randomly absolutely oh shoot but when you kind of already have that in your head it's much much higher so it has happened to me um have i ever gotten up and left no and usually, I, I never really do. It's pulling the, I'm richer than y'all. I'm, um, I'm. <clears throat> but, again, that makes it harder. And you start to, when you have agoraphobia and you have a panic attack or you believe you can have a panic attack in a certain situation, then you avoid that situation. Obviously, I have made a commitment to this podcast and I cannot just decide, you know what? I'm not going to do this no more. I mean, I can, but I mean, what's that going to do for me? Honestly, that's just going to make me depressed because I'm going to be disappointed in the fact that I'm not doing something that I actually want to do. I think that's one thing, um, one misconception about anxiety and panic attacks is that you avoid the things that you don't want to do. No, you be avoiding the things that you do want to do too. And that's the part that is very, um, it, it's very depressing and it's very, hard to deal with because it's like it's even the things that you like to do my edges are just now coming back i had that's a whole nother video on how my edges fell out generally my husband um takes me to the podcast and he'll drop me off and then he'll come back and get me because of my anxiety and agoraphobia I do not really drive anymore and that did not happen overnight that was like literally over the course of some years and it really kind of set set in with the pandemic because I didn't have to drive anywhere and I definitely took the opportunity not to drive anywhere so during this pandemic of staying in the house being on quarantine you know I feel like my agoraphobia has gotten worse because not only did I have a reason to stay inside, I really truly had to stay inside. So I feel like it has gotten worse. And I will say I probably have not driven in a car by myself in at least like six months. Like seriously. Honestly, it could possibly even be longer than that if I'm really being honest. And because I mean, I, I work from home. I don't have to drive to work anymore. And that was probably like the last thing that I still used to do was have to drive to work. Like, you got to get this money. So I was still doing that at the least. And then once that was gone, I didn't have to do that anymore. It was a wrap. And of course, now that things are starting to open up outside more, he's doing other things. I'm doing other things where... You know, he can't always take me where I got to go. You know, and I mean, obviously, that's going to be the case with anybody. Like, he cannot take me everywhere I got to go. And, you know, our schedules aren't always going to align where that's going to be a possibility. So, I got to get back driving. And I also 
got a new car. It don't make no sense to be paying a note on a car that you ain't finna drive. You know what I'm saying? I did my whole little social media rollout, like, okay, got me a new car, whoop de woo woo But I don't even drive it. Just because I have agoraphobia and, you know, mentally, of course, my mind has tricked me into believing that I'm safer at home, which, I mean, the pandemic did not help because you really was safer at home. You really are safer at home. I feel like that has really just made it worse. So I'm really using this time to be like, you know what? We finna do something about this, okay? I could have possibly bit off more than I could chew. Because to go from no driving to a lot of driving, we're not even gonna get into that. We're not even gonna put that in the air. I'm finna finish getting ready because I'm late and I should be leaving right now. And honestly, that's one of the things that I was really trying to avoid was being late because then that just heightens your anxiety. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, let me finish getting ready and then I'll come back to y'all when it's time to bounce. All right, so I had to just go because I am fixing to be too late <laughs> while I'm playing. Whew. So we in the car, so the lighting is gonna be just what it is, but we on the way. Um, wait, what you mean somewhere wrong? Look at the routes, 19 minutes. And I'm supposed to be there in eight minutes. <laughs> so the thing about me driving is I've always driven. Like I've been driving since I was 16 years old. So I think a common misconception with people with anxiety that don't drive is that they're scared of the actual act of driving. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. I'm more worried about not being in control and I'm doing something like driving. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, when you have very intrusive thoughts, you know what I mean? It can be scary to feel like you really want to act on those things when you know it's not safe. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you get anxious at a red light and you want to just go. Obviously, in that situation, just going ain't an option. You know what I mean? But when that, when that thought is that intrusive, um, I feel like it is that's scary you know what i mean when you have a panic attack and you feel like that it makes you be like oh no uh -uh. i don't want to feel like that again or i don't want to put myself in that type of what you uh, you know what you what appears to be danger because it's like if i would have really like what the like why like you really just be questioning yourself so i feel like that's how it started with me and i feel like it took a series of it took years for me to really get to this point where i'm at right now where I don't really drive at all. It's very, very important for me to get back to driving just because you want that independence, you know what I mean? And then you also want your spouse or whoever your support system is to have um, that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That space, you know what I mean? Or you don't want them to feel like you're completely dependent on them. And you don't want to feel completely dependent on them. You know what I mean? You want to give them that relief it's saying that we're gonna get there at 10 10 so let me go ahead and take some stress off myself and go ahead and hit my i mean they i be late but i usually be there around 10 which is when we start or when we're supposed to start so a lot of times when i'm late or avoid I, what i notice is that people with anxiety like to avoid and then what ends up happening is that it makes your anxiety worse. Instead of just saying I'm late or saying, you know, this is what's going on. It makes it worse if you just don't say nothing. You think that you're saving yourself a confrontation or whatever, but you're not helping yourself. I think this morning was like one of the mornings the, that I woke up the earliest and was you know what I mean but it just took me so long to mentally get there for me to mentally like hype myself into being like girl why why is you tripping like come on it's time to go get yourself ready like you know what I mean and you can't really for me it's, it's hard to gauge how much time that's gonna take <laughs> you know and then also I didn't get no sleep last night now generally when I know I'm about to do something like this I don't get no sleep i didn't go to sleep till five o'clock this morning and i had to be up by eight o'clock 
at the latest, I would say. If I'm trying to be somewhere by 10, obviously, especially knowing that I have anxiety and knowing that it was going to take me a little bit of extra mental push to do what I had to do, it was, I needed to be up probably even earlier than that. Of course, we all know that no sleep does not help with anxiety. So there's that. Um, and then also it just gives you another reason to back out and not do what you need to do or want to do. So, because you're tired. But, um, yeah, we out here. Now, how do I feel? I'm scared. Like, shitless of absolutely nothing. But I feel it in my chest. Like, my chest feels heavy. My arms feel, you know, my limbs start to feel kind of numb. And I'm starting to get butterflies in my stomach. Hello? Hey. I'm having a panic attack. No. I'm getting close to like, I think I, I'm, I'm getting close to like downtown. Tyson, I can't do this. I can't do this. This is such a struggle. Like, I need to get to where I'm going. I can do this. I know I can do this. I can't. I cannot do this. Like, this is fucking crazy. And I was about to get on the wrong fucking way anyway. Hello? I didn't get it, but I got back on the freeway. It's just, it's a lot at one time, so. I don't know. Maybe I'm just tripping. something that you used to do all the time to it being difficult to do like it's just hella weird worse than California, especially with the way they freeways is, and flash floods, and all kind of shit, and I was cool, you know, and now it's like, fucking going a 19 minute drive is like, a struggle. Is it this way? I'm hella lost. Okay, yeah, I, I found it. We ain't got no guests today, luckily. So usually when we have a guest, I feel like my anxiety be higher. You know what I'm saying? But that's just how it is when you know when I'm around new people all the time. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel.
fucking made it, bro. I'm like, I still gotta make it through the fucking episode, but y'all, I fucking did it. Like, I feel like crying. <laughs> like, y'all don't understand. But I'm late as hell, so I need to get up in here. But I am very overwhelmed right now. Like, this is fucking crazy. We gonna talk about it after we get up out of like, here. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's still so much more to learn. And I think now in the day and age that we're in with social media and, you know, all of this extra validation of, of the internet, like, I feel like people really think that they know it all. Mm -hmm. Like, they're there. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Like, bro, you still got a lot of life to live, God willing. And right. it's still so much for you to learn. And your mindset is still going to change mm -hmm. on the things that you are so sure about right now right who this water is hot as hell my god hello are you good or did you want me to call you no i'm good i appreciate you though okay, okay. i just want to make sure before i, before I hit the freeway all right thank you uh -huh. all right bye. see that's how when you got real friends real people that support you and care about what you go through they check on you. You feel what I'm saying? That's some real ones. I got some real ones, all right? But anyways, y'all, we made it. Nigga, we made it. I made it through. I feel like the way home is always easier than the way there. Not saying that it's just smooth sailing all the time. But um, that's a part of exposure therapy is that during it's going to feel like shite okay but the more that you do it um the easier it becomes and the more confidence that you build so the more that you give in to your anxiety and panic the worse that it gets because basically your mind is telling you that there's danger and what you do when you give into it is that you are solidifying that thought you're saying yes there was something to be afraid of when there wasn't like okay oh shit god damn it so the only way past the uh, panic attack is through it um i think that's something we really need to talk about is the getting through because people always talk about getting help but even when you get help and you find out what you're supposed to do actually doing those things can be difficult you know what i mean and it could be hard to stick with, especially when those things are uncomfortable. Going to therapy is uncomfortable. Nobody talks about that part about it. They always talk about the end result. But actually doing it is uncomfortable. Exposure therapy, uncomfortable. Cognitive behavior, it's uncomfortable. And I think that's why I really wanted to do these videos just so we could talk about it. And people could have an example of somebody talking about the uncomfortable part of it and not just the benefits the end benefits of it and that's not to say not to do it i'm not encouraging anybody to not do it and to not get the help and not put in the work i just want people to feel supported to feel heard and to know that you're not the only person that it's hard for getting the help is not the end all be all you still got to do the work and it's other people out here struggling i used to feel like dang why am I not cured yet? Like, why why am I not feeling better yet? Why do other people, why do I feel like other people are getting better results than I am? But it's because it's not that people are getting better results. It's just that people really aren't talking about the, the, the journey through and the struggle through it. Um, they're just talking about the beginning and the end. Figuring out you need help, getting help, and then the end result. So, um, I'm really glad I did this video. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. If y'all feel like this video was helpful, if y'all want me to um, bring y'all along more on my exposure therapy that I'm gonna be doing <laughs> for myself, um, let me know. Let me know and let me know some of the things that you guys do um, to get over your panic or your agoraphobia or things that you feel like you avoid based on your anxiety. Let me know what y'all do.